folks, I'm Christine Mintert, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about a thing called desperation pie. So imagine you're living on a farm in, say, the rural Midwestern U.S. Um, in a time before supermarkets and long-distance trans transportation allowed us to have out-of-season produce um, all year round. So like today we can get pineapples and bananas and strawberries, blackberries, like any time of year, regardless of when they're actually in season. So before all that, um, when you had to get what you had from the land or from things your neighbors produced, um, local, fresh, seasonal food. In the winter, you're not going to be able to make like an apple pie or a something with strawberries or that kind of thing. So those were the times when home cooks got really creative I'm making dessert, making other dishes. Um, and you could basically turn your home cupboard with no fresh fruit into a delicious dessert. Um, and that's called a desperation pie. Hoosier cookbook, um, which I believe was compiled for the United States Bicentennial Celebration, so 200 years since the Declaration of Independence. Um, there are at least 18 pies that can be considered desperation pies, and just to define those, pies that don't require any seasonal or imported fresh fruit, um, they only have common, inexpensive household kitchen ingredients that you can easily find year-round. Um, like sugar, butter, flour, eggs, milk, um, or like dried fruit. There's one exception, that's the green tomato pie. Um, it's a desperation pie technically because green tomatoes can serve as a substitute for apples. Um, I've never had this, supposedly it's quite good. In the state of Indiana, where I live, desperation pie has um, kind of a special place because our official state pie, that's right, we have an official state pie, is the sugar cream pie, which um, trust me, is delicious. The most basic version is made with um, cream, flour, butter, sugar, salt, and vanilla. Um, you mix those together and you pour them in an unbaked pie crust. And then um, in my recipe, which is from the Hoosier cookbook, it says it's 160 years old, which makes it about as old as the state of Indiana itself, if not a little bit older. You pour that mixture into the pie crust, you bake it at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, um, for 10 minutes, then you turn down the temperature to 325 and bake it until pie crust starts getting brown, the filling gets a little bit bubbly. Um, the final product is uh, sweet, rich, creamy, it's quite delicious, a little bit like creme brulee, um, but in a pie and without the crunchy sugar on top, though I'm sure you could add that if you desired. It's quite decadent for something called a desperation pie. Uh, one of my favorites. Some other desperation pies include chess pie, uh, which is a custard pie incorporating cornmeal. Um, my mom made it and she had a recipe that called for lemon juice, so sometimes it has other flavorings added in, but um, it's a custard pie, so it's a little bit creamy, it's got eggs in it. Oatmeal pie, um, which is an affordable alternative for pecan pie. It may have been developed during the American Civil War. Pecans come from the southern U.S. and um, and of course, the Civil War was extremely destructive in the South. Families and cooks looking for um, for ingredients for their pies couldn't always get pecans, and when they could, they were extremely expensive. So um, it's theorized that they might have used oatmeal as a substitute. There's shoe fly pie, which is molasses flavored pie, and I believe it has Amish origins. Um, it's called shoe fly pie because the bakers would have to shoo the flies away. Uh, while they were making the pie. The Great Depression came up with some really, uh, some very thrifty desserts, as you might imagine. Um, probably the most famous is mock apple pie, uh, which was made with Ritz crackers soaked in like, simple syrup, um, so basically sugar water, and lemon juice. And those formed the filling for this mock apple pie. And this recipe was apparently on Ritz cracker boxes for decades, I think. Uh, there's something called water pie, a very simple pie, uh, with a filling made of sugar, flour, water, milk, butter, and spices. So probably a little bit like the sugar cream pie, but a lot less rich. Desperation pies today, um, they're, I mean, they're kind of a relic. They're not 
they're not necessarily super popular. Um, I would say the sugar cream pie might be popular in Indiana. I think their, their existence kind of gives us an idea of the resourcefulness and optimism that got families through those lean times, like the Great Depression and uh, rough winters um, and, and times when they, they couldn't get lots of fresh produce. They didn't live with the sort of plenty that we're used to today. Clearly they managed, and they managed quite deliciously in some cases. <laughs> some of these recipes are being discovered today, rediscovered. Although a lot of us have access to a huge variety of fresh fruits, exotic fruits at the supermarket um, all year round, um, more and more people are choosing to emphasize seasonal and local ingredients, um, more people shopping at the farmer's markets. More people are choosing to incorporate these ingredients and emphasize them in their cooking and dining. Um, so thanks to this rediscovery, the Desperation Pie has kind of found a renewed place in um, 21st century American cooking. I think this is a fantastic development. It kind of allows us to get more of an authentic flavor of our region um, when we can use local produce that, um, that, our, that our local families and farmers can provide. I'm excited about that. I love cooking with that in mind, with those authentic flavors um, of my hometown, of Indiana, the Midwest. Um, I think it, it makes for some really fascinating and delicious cooking. Thanks! And I hope you can try a desperation pie!